Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fifty grand says I get this in one take. <laughs> Wonder who that could be. It's a gift. Thank you, beautiful wife. Even though you're not here. Before we get into this video, go to the subscribe button and hit that and also go to the notification bell and hit that so you can be updated for when I release new content. All right, so I was gonna show you the meeting today with Warner Brothers, the uh, our labor, but I thought, you know what? Why do you wanna see a couple of old stuffy men talking nonsense in a, in a studio? I wanted to kind of show you something that, you know, kind of hasn't been seen before. So. What's amazing is that we got a call from um, one of our publishers and he basically said, sorry about the lighting, I'm having to vlog, vlog on my own today because uh, my normal cameraman, Trusty Joe, is uh, doing something else. So yeah, anyway, yeah, so we got a call from uh, one of our publishers saying, hmm, I just got something interesting in. Nile Rogers wants to work with you guys. You guys know who Nile Rogers is, right? If you don't, here's some of his work. Yeah, so basically we got the call saying uh, he wants to work with us on his album, which is awesome. But that's not just the most amazing part. Do you know where he wants to work? Abby. Road Studios. <laughs> I've never ever. The craziest thing is, I didn't feel I'd actually uh, work there. You know, the same place as where the Beatles wrote their epic, epic music. And uh, for Nile Rogers, at Abbey Road Studios. Am I uh, happy to say the least? Feeling like a boss right now. It's a sign for good beer right there. It's a sign. <laughs> My stepdad used to say, well, he actually told me this this story about Mozart, and Mozart said at one time that no one ever writes music. In fact, there's a library of music in the ethos, in the, uh, in the uh, atmosphere, in the universe somewhere. And when you have writer's block, it means you don't have access to that library. And then when you do finally get it, it means you are able to access that library. So apparently writer's block doesn't exist. You're just either in the library or you're not. I don't know how true that is, but something, something food for me. Oh, hit up. 
singing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I start simple and I go. Yes! Yes! Woo! Yes! That's it. That's what it's heard. That's another song. <laughs> That's his own song right there. It's funny, man. We I've never wrote like this until like a day or two ago. Really? <laughs> Ever. It was like That's crazy. Yeah, okay. So your normal process is just to get on there and just Yeah, yeah. I usually write very linearly, like the whole thing out and stuff yeah. like that. But then um like I says I I work with different people and learn different stuff and go, damn, well yeah, maybe Whereas working and, with like Bruno or Gargo, is it more like a jam session? Well, Bruno was definitely jam. We we just, I mean, we <laughs> <laughs> it was and that was insane. We just said, I mean, it was really Anderson Pac who was opening for Bruno Mars. So Bruno just came over one day mm. while we were doing it. So, but me and Anderson Pac were just like, it would just first sometimes it would just be he and I just guitar and drums coming up with all sorts of ideas. Then I said, well, yeah, let my boy Russ play too. And so then now the three of us would jam. And then Russ started playing bass too on some shit. So we just, it just got I mean, crazy. That's Damn. a track in itself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, what, that's what happened to get lucky, I swear to God. That's a, it, was, it, was, it was the beginning. It was, it was like the piece. It was the beginning of another song. And they just said, like, fuck it. Let's make that into its own song. That's unbelievable how that happened. So they ch just took that piece there? Yeah, so well, Get Lucky was get... the intro to another song. It was the beginning. <laughs> can I get you to that? Can I get that? Can I get that? Can I get you doing that? Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love that, that, that shit, man. Video games, all those dance yeah, games. Of course, we're all, yeah, we're all yeah, freak yeah, out. We're, in, we're in Shrek. Uh, freak out. We're of in, course. Yeah. We're in, yeah. uh, that was these song yeah. at the end, right? Yeah. No, no, it was it was clever. Shrek's woman says, "Look, you got to go meet my parents." Yeah. Blah blah blah, and he's like, "No, I don't want to leave the forest." And his friends say, "No, don't worry, Shrek. We got your house covered." You know, everything is cool, man. Go to the palace, go meet the parents. Yeah, I remember. Everything is cool. I remember. <laughs> so Shrek gets it. He, he reluctantly gets in the cart, and they go driving, and he turns around to look back at his house, and the motherfucker's going, aw, oh, freak out. <laughs> they actually had uh, burn rubber in that scene. Burn rubber on me. Nobody laughed. So I got a phone call um, from the people at DreamWorks, and it was like, they said, no, nah, you got to okay this. If you say no, we're going to leave burn rubber in. Um, but we can't even show it to you because we really want to lock the reel to the guys. You're going to risk my biggest copyright and I can't see you it. You can't even see it. Yeah. So I charged them some stupid fucking money and they paid it. <laughs> they paid it. And it made, it was brilliant they the way they used it. it. Yeah, it was great. It was I mean, brilliant. it was just a split second. Okay. Right, we're in the studio here with Nile Rogers, Disciples, the legendary. I have to just say though, because like, we're kind of playing it cool right now. Like, Super playing it cool. Super, Super playing it cool. We so know, sure. like, every time you've said a story, inside our hearts we're just like sitting here like look, like little kids i like, can't wait to hear the end of it firstly thank you so much for having a session with us today um this for our youngsters who don't know but you should already know is the legendary Nile rogers who is responsible for most of the catalog in your iphone right now so. <laughs> that's true right there right so i just want to can you say something to the to the people um what can i say man i'm loving you brothers meeting you for the first time in what, five minutes we vibed, uh, working on a great track, and we'll probably come up with about five or six more before we're out of here tonight. There we go. There you go. I know what it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Fangirl moment over. All right, cool. What, 2013, 2012? Yeah, we had, we had Hadi Love two years before Calvin heard it, um, and our label were just like, I'm not, 
they just couldn't wrap their head around it being a single. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they tried everything in their power to kind of change it and change the vocalist. Mm -hmm. And we were just stubborn. We were like, nope, mm -hmm. if it's not this vocalist, then we're not going to do it. Right. And then I think Gab sent it to Calvin because mm -hmm. they just they just signed a publishing deal to him. He sent that song and a, and a few others. And Calvin was just jumped at the challenge. He was like, wow, what is this? And so, what you what what it was before was kind of like kind of like a mellow mellow house record, mm -hmm. which really worked really warm. And then he got his hands on it and he gave it that pop shine, you know, right, yeah, that, yeah. that I was yeah. gonna say that hit factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was already a hit, yeah. but when he got his hands on it, it was just like he just cleaned it up. And it is See that. Sometimes a different perspective changes the whole shit. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. I mean, that my whole life is built on that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, if you had heard Let's Dance when David walked in my bedroom, man, you'd be on the fucking floor laughing your ass out. <laughs> And I told him, I said, sing it exactly the way that you hear it. Yeah. Just sing what you sang in my bedroom and let me do the music. Yeah. So it wasn't like what we can do now. Yeah. We had to do, we had to play that shit. Mm, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you had like, to play it. So he walked in there singing that folk shit and the exact same thing that he sang sounded like that. But I, that demo I played to. Unbelievable. And, and what happened is that I wrote the chart so that the drummer, the bass drum pattern matches my guitar. So that's some old R and B thing that's what we want. The bass and the bass drum and all that shit a lot. Right? So when I play boom da boom 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 and you go boom da boom 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 you hear me go woo because I was like I was just guessing that it would work. Yeah. And it worked. Woo! And then David comes in with this, put on your Because even the, the kick in your the demo version has got the same pattern as the one on on the actual record. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that that was the whole thing that changed the whole vibe. Yeah. Yeah. What chord is that? What is that on the end there? Raise nine seven. Dominant seven raise nine. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Something like that. Yeah. been amazing man yeah and you know just let it be the start of some shit you know call me up i'm around yeah I do stuff it's amazing no it's been an absolute pleasure man. bro yeah, you man, guys absolutely. have been great man thank you cool. so much you guys really much good, stuff man. my bro much great stuff man <laughs> yeah you made a dream, yeah, dream awesome come true for us man trust me it's uh, unbelievable Thanks yeah so it's gonna be killing man